welcome back to Politics in Hawaii with Dennis Isaki on Think Tech Hawaii. Today we'll be speaking with Tyler Dos Santos Tam, the chairman of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. Tyler graduated from Punahou, but we will not hold that against him. Actually, he was a classmate of my son Ian, and they graduated in 2006, I believe, which makes him a millennial. Ian studied engineering while Tyler went to Yale University to study political science and Portuguese. Maybe he can tell us why he had to go all the way to Yale to study that. He was with the Young Democrats, Construction Alliance, the Neighborhood Board, was recognized as one of the 40 under 40 in Hawaii and is honorary counsel for Portugal in Hawaii, among other things. Tyler, welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. And perhaps you can start by telling us who you are and what you stand for. Tyler? Aloha. Well, thank you, Dennis. And thank you to Think Tech Hawaii for this opportunity. Um, as you mentioned, I'm the chair of the Democratic Party of Hawaii, uh, which is the largest political party in our state. And of course, we're here to advance policy that will help Hawaii's people. Um, the Democratic Party, of course, has been dominant in Hawaii politics uh, since the revolution of 1954. And we've accomplished a lot, but there's still a lot of work to do. And looking forward uh, to 2022, under my leadership as chairman, we're trying to encourage our members to get involved, to push uh, issues forward that will help local families, uh, whether that's on uh, the cost of living here in the islands, our homelessness crisis, affordable housing, and more. So, uh, when and why did you decide to get into politics? Well, you know, I've always um, had a passion for helping people. Um, my dad is a doctor, and so, you know, growing up, that was his way of, of helping the community, one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, doctor to patient. Um, in sort of my uh, sphere of interest, um, you know, I, I recognize that government uh, has a big role in our lives and has the opportunity to, um, to actually be proactive and help people. And so being involved with uh, different political organizations, whether it's a Democratic Party of Hawaii, the Young Democrats, or even as a member of the neighborhood board, you know, I was, I was able to plug in and, you know, see how an individual through our government system can make a difference, whether that's uh, as a neighborhood board member helping uh, when one of our neighbors got hit by a car to make sure there was a, a flashing light beacon and more pedestrian safety in our neighborhood um, to big picture issues like helping to advance uh, some policies in affordable housing um, and more uh, and pushing for a higher minimum wage as chair of the Democratic Party. Some of your ancestors were sakadas, immigrant plantation workers, and some at different trades. Uh, how does uh, how do you relate to those culture, and uh, how did that affect you? Yeah, well, you know, the story of Hawaii is really a story of immigrants, whether it was the native Hawaiians coming here. Um, two millennia ago, or my ancestors who came from the Philippines and Portugal and China to work in the plantations, or, you know, folks who came after the plantation era um, to seek, you know, a, a, a whatever it is that they wanted to find here um, and, and make their life here in the islands. And so having that background, I think has really informed my desire to make Hawaii a better place for everybody um, who's here. Uh, you know, my ancestors uh, like yours and, and like many of the viewers, you know, worked hard to um, get me to where I am, get you to where you are. Uh, and, you know, I think we need, the best way that we can honor them is by using our skills and talents uh, to move the state forward and to make a better place. I mean, that's why they voyaged across the sea was to make a better place uh, for themselves and their family. Didn't you get any pressure to be a medical doctor yourself? Um, you know, I think every kid, right? Uh, they, they see what their parents do at some point, they want to do it. And, and then they realize that uh, in some cases, maybe it's not for them. Uh, so I, I definitely thought about it as a kid. Uh, but just like every other kid, I think I had a whole lot of other ambitions. Uh, I think at one point I wanted to be an astronaut. Um, that, of course, never happened. But uh, we'll see what the future brings. 
Yeah, you, uh, for a while you were the executive director for the Hawaii Construction Alliance with the carpenters, laborers, yep. uh, masons, and operating engineers. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So uh, from 2012 to 2018, I was the executive director of the Hawaii Construction Alliance, which is the group that represents five of the basic craft unions in the islands. So we had 15,000 members statewide, and it was really an eye-opening experience for me um, to you know, be their executive director and to kind of administer the programs that the Alliance did. But for you know, uh, someone like me who went to Yale and, and came back home um, to be working with you know, folks in the blue collar industry was, was really eye opening. I mean, we see how hard people have to work to make a living here in the islands, to pay for housing, you know, the, for a roof over their head, uh, to pay for you know, childcare for their kids or tuition. Um, and, and really it, it gave me a, really a sense that, that we need to be doing more for our working families. Another thing that I learned when I was at the Construction Alliance and, and really worked on was um, our apprenticeship programs. You know, we had a lot of people coming out of high school, people who had been working in a different field and maybe wanted to pivot to the construction industry, um, coming into the apprenticeship program. But a lot of them weren't, uh, didn't quite have the math skills, kind of the STEM skills that we are we're teaching now um, to to get into the trades and to kind of be workforce ready. And so that's another area that I really wanna work on is making sure that our workforce is ready for the jobs for the future. And um, you know, our Democratic Party platform has a lot about STEM, uh, has a lot about education, but we have to put that into action and make sure that our young people, um, millennials, Gen Z, and the next generation after that um, do possess the skills uh, necessary uh, whether that's working with computers or working with their hands um, to make a living in Hawaii that, that puts them in the middle class, that lets them get a roof over their head. I mean, we have to do a lot more. And, and that, my experience at the Construction Alliance really um, opened my eyes to that. I think there is a really need for you know, training in, in this, this uh, uh, construction industry, especially now that they're or short-handed, like, like many industries, but um, uh, with uh, you mentioned STEM, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so STEM, as uh, you might know, is science, technology, engineering, and math. I mean, uh, this is sort of an umbrella term, and some people put a in there for the arts, so STEAM, but this is really an umbrella term for you know the kind of skills that we recognize as being necessary for the jobs of the future. You know, Hawaii uh, for a long time was agricultural based, and of course now we're a service industry. And as we look for what that next um, set of industries, what the next chapter in Hawaii's economic future is, you know, we want we need our workforce to be ready for whatever that's going to be. Um, and, and with the way that the world is going, you know, uh, definitely heavy on computers and technology, we don't even know what the next big thing might be, but Hawaii needs to be ready for that. And so, um, going back to the Democratic Party, we're going to be working on our platform over the next few months. And our platform uh, talks a lot about STEM and STEAM, but you know, we want to make sure that it's, it's clear and actionable. Um, and so that means supporting you know, the return of things like vocational programs in schools, uh, making sure that we do have a path from preschool to college for people to you know be able to gain skills um throughout you know their young lives so they're workforce ready um and that's something that's also being talked about in congress right now um as you know with the build back better plan uh making sure that there's preschool access that's high quality so kids you know have the skills like reading and uh, understanding numbers all the way to college um so that they're really ready to enter the workforce yeah, um, you know, the early education is really important. I understand like some people when they go to the community college and they get to take the pre-pre-algebra pre, pre class or something, you know, just to, to get to be, uh, to be able to qualify to take the test. And, yeah. On, uh, yeah, and on agriculture, you mentioned this, um, I noticed we, uh, Politicians talk about agriculture in Hawaii a lot, but I see over here they get most. Uh, you you get the big 
seed companies or you got a lot of immigrants i'm not saying they're bad but you know they're doing a good job but when they go to the farmer's market they're you know almost entirely uh recent immigrants yeah. and they're hard workers um kind of different perhaps the guys over here i don't know yeah teaching teaching them you know science technology or whatever. everybody wants to get into computers now you know yeah, I think there's there's room definitely for you know what we have amazing uh, an amazing climate, fertile soil, but at the end of the day, it comes down to whether our agricultural industry is economically viable, right? I mean, if it's too expensive to farm, if the market isn't there to buy our Hawaii agricultural products, if there's not water, if the water's too expensive, if the plant's too expensive, if labor's too expensive, if shipping the goods here or out of Hawaii is too expensive it's uh, going to be a challenge. And so all of these elements that go into agriculture, just like every other issue in Hawaii, um, you know, we really need to break down what um, all of those inputs and, and factors are uh, in order to make it happen. I mean, it's not as simple as waving a magic wand um, to make something like agriculture happen. It's all of these little pieces and you have to be able to thread that needle in the same way you know, one of the issues that I've been uh, working on fairly diligently over the past few years is uh, affordable housing. Again, can't wave a magic wand and make affordable housing happen. You have to look at the economics of it, right? If it's if the material is too expensive, if you can't get it um, onto you know the the job site on time, if it's held up in court, if it is you know if if there's not the infrastructure like sewer and water and roads around a project, it's not going to happen. And so there's a lot of work that needs to go in in, in all of these areas um, in order to make things work. And I hope that the Democratic Party of White can be a venue for for exploring these ideas and pushing them forward. We've got a few months left before the legislative session, and I know that there's been discussions among our different committees, whether it's the legislative committee, platform committee, um, or among our elected officials as well, about you know really looking at all of these different inputs that go into all the different issues that Hawaii faces. Yep, you mentioned housing. Housing is a it's a biggie, you know. Yeah. Government, I keep saying, government say, you know, we we got to do more. Um, and then they concentrate on you know certain aspects of it, but there's a lot more government gotta do or not do. We gotta think of housing, you know, like sometimes they're impeding the yeah. the future of housing. Yeah. Uh, so it's definitely a, a a puzzle, right, to fit all these pieces together and make sure it works. Because if you pull on one lever, you know, maybe you complicate something on another end. So it's um, you know requires really listening to experts and understanding the big picture um, in order to make things happen. Yeah. And we got the, the, the touchy subject, the rail. Yeah. Uh, where does the, the party, if you will, uh, stand on that? Well, like a lot of issues, um, th there are things that divide, you know, Democrats. And, and of course, rail is one of them. There's people that um, believe that we need it in order to create, you know, housing, especially TOD, uh, the, the type of housing that's going to be affordable in Honolulu's urban core. Um, and of course, there's Democrats that support rail because of uh, sort of environmental reasons, getting people out of their cars, reducing our carbon footprint. There's others who are concerned about, you know, just the seemingly endless spending uh, that's going to this project and the lack of accountability there. And um, we even see that among our elected officials, right? And, and this is an issue that divides us. And so I think people perceive the Democratic Party as sort of a monolith um, because it is very, de uh, very dominant in our legislature. I mean, it's 24 to one in the state Senate, but among Democrats, and Rail's a good example of this, there's a wide variety of opinions and ideas. And so, you know, the party itself is, is an interesting venue for a lot of those ideas to be talked about. Yeah, exactly. That's, uh, that's, uh, uh, I hate to say it, but it's been dividing some of the, the group. Right. 
And in some ways, I think that's healthy, right? I mean, if we all uh, thought in lockstep and all agreed 100% of the time, uh, politics in Hawaii wouldn't be very interesting. So having a diversity of ideas, um, well thought out ideas, um, backed by you know good information, I think is is helpful. Um, and and we actually need more of that kind of discussion uh, out in the community. Okay. Um, how do you see the sh the shipping? Uh, what do you call it? The Jones Act. Uh, it's been in discussion right now, all the way up to Congress. Is uh, does the party have any uh, thoughts on that? Yeah, well, the Democratic Party of Hawaii has been a very, very strong supporter of the Jones Act. Um, and of course, there's people who, you know, disagree and, and don't think that uh, we should have the Jones Act here. But I think from the party's perspective, uh, protecting American jobs is really important, not only the jobs at our harbors here in Hawaii, but across the country in terms of shipbuilding. Um, and national security is really important to make sure that we have American flagged vessels going between our ports and we aren't exposed to other countries carrying our or, you know, goods. It's the same way with the airline industry. Um, you know, we have American planes, um, American maintenance, uh, American pilots flying uh, between our, our different airports within the country. We don't have, um, you know, Ryanair from Europe or uh, Japan Airlines or any other, you know, airlines flying between LA and New York. And it's kind of the same thing here. And so we want to make sure that there's uh, high quality American jobs and we're not exposed to kind of the whims of, of some other country um, when it comes to our, our merchant marine and our shipping. But, you know, on the other side, we argue about the cost and, you know, the, the time delays and uh, there's even, you know, uh, discussion up in Congress on this. It's right, right. And, and I think going back to kind of our, our previous discussion about issues that divide Democrats and the need for uh, more venues for uh, discussion that's backed by evidence and data, you know, I think that while the Democratic Party, of course, has been very supportive of the Jones Act, I think the people who, um, you know, want to see that modified um, should come with, you know, strong evidence and data uh, around uh, the purported cost increases. Um, one really important thing is, you know, the Jones Act only applies between U.S. ports, right? So Hawaii to Oakland or Hawaii to Seattle or Long Beach. Um, nothing stopping, you know, a foreign carrier from shipping straight to Honolulu from Shanghai, but we really don't see that. And again, this goes back to the economics of, you know, why would, you uh, uh, a ship veer out of its its normal path from Shanghai to uh, California to stop off in Hawaii, drop off a few containers, and then continue on. Um, it makes a lot more sense for them to carry on an enormous ship uh, to California and then you know break it down there. And until those economics you know change, um, you know, I really don't see uh, the sort of anti Jones argument, anti Jones Act argument uh, succeeding among Democrats here. Okay, thanks. We get so much to talk about. We'll uh, we're halfway through. Can we take a short uh, break? I'm Mitch Ewan, host of Hawaii, the state of clean energy on Think Tech Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy is about following the many clean energy initiatives in Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy appears weekly on Think Tech Hawaii at 4 p.m. on Wednesdays. Thank you so much for watching our show. We'll see you then. Aloha. Welcome back to Politics in Hawaii with Dennis Isaki and Tyler Dos Santos Tam. Uh, Tyler, um, you're a millennial. You see things differently, or you know how things were done in the past, in the past politics, and 
uh, how do you see us going in the future? With yeah, the, well, I'm I'm proud to be uh, the first millennial chair of the Democratic Party of Hawaii and the youngest chair in quite some time. And I think that's provided a, a really, you know, different perspective uh, coming in and uh, on our executive board um, for our executive officers, uh, four out of the six of our executive officers are uh, millennials. Uh, we're all in our early 30s. And um, this is unheard of in the country. I mean, I'm, I'm the youngest chair in the country and our team is, is a very young chair, uh, our very young team. And I think that this is to our benefit. You know, this is a, a time for, you know, new ideas to come in, bringing in folks who maybe haven't been involved in politics um, and, and or haven't seen politics or government as a way of actually making a positive difference. I think when people look at our team, I hope that they see that, um, you know, we're open to new ideas, doing things a little bit differently. And of course, um, you know, there's sometimes uh, pushback or detractors said, well, we've always, you know, done it this way. You know, why are we pivoting? Um, and that's fine. I think that's healthy. I, COVID definitely has changed how we do things. And I think having a young team that's uh, tech, a little more tech savvy and again, willing to, to try new things um, has helped us get through COVID and, and continue to do activities uh, that the party should be doing, right? We've moved a lot of our activities to be virtual. We've done virtual talk stories, uh, education for you know, our members and discussions online. Um, and, and I hope that that continues even after COVID, and we can look at how we do things hybrid or um, you know, some events in person, some online, but it's really helped us to bring the state together uh, because people have been able to join in online. On the screen is a picture of one of our in-person events. We just did a beach cleanup in Kaka'ako, thanks to our representatives um, in uh, urban Honolulu. Um, but we've also done a number of online events and uh, those have been really, really interesting. Yeah, in the old, old way, they had the big political rallies at the park, where everybody gets together um, uh, for, you know, personal contact. Like you said, you know, with the pandemic, it kind of changed things a lot. Um, old timers, you know, had meetings every week with, you know, a whole bunch of their friends, you know, they... <laughs> had a mini party all the time right and um now with well, another thing is with the computers now it's, it's changed a lot but uh i see it you know not as personal you know with uh the way it was before how do you see it uh from your perspective you know, you're right. I mean, there's no substitute for getting together in person. And that's why we're hoping to have our state convention as sort of a hybrid model where people can get together um, at a big hotel in Waikiki, but, you know, aren't obligated to. And if people don't want to um, spend the money to fly to Oahu, get a hotel room for our neighbor islanders, they can still tune in. Um, one consequence of the pandemic is when we've done in-person activities, they are limited to being smaller. And so, for example, you know, we usually would do a really big breakfast in Honolulu every year as our big signature fundraising event. Because we can't have 100 plus people in one place, you know, in Honolulu, what we said is, why don't we break this up and do four events statewide with you know, 30 people in each island. So actually it's the net effect is it's more people who are engaged and we have the opportunity to get to the neighbor islands and, and engage with our members on Kauai, Maui, um, on the big island, um, as well as here on Oahu. It can't be Oahu centric and, and COVID has actually made it a little bit easier thanks to technology um, to really be a statewide party um, that's united through, you know, Zoom or WebEx or whatever other platform. Um, but people can plug in from wherever it is in the state that they call home. That's, and that's some, uh, some people look at uh, younger people or I don't know if it's a millennial or some generation as the me generation, you know, like, what can you do for me? You know, as opposed to, you know, what can we do for everybody? I think there's a little bit of that. You want to, yeah, there, there is. And I, I think the, the message, you know, we do have to show as, as a political party, whether it's the Democratic Party or any other party, what we're doing for you as a voter, um, as well as what we're doing for everybody. And, and 
that of course is a balancing act because um, you know we want to help the most people that uh, that we can, and uh, so so that's something that we're always mindful of. Going back to sort of the party's operations um, as we move towards more technology, you know, there are some folks who, um, you know, maybe aren't as tech savvy and can't, you know, utilize uh, technology as quickly um, or as deftly as others. And so um, one thing that our younger folks have been doing, especially on Oahu County, is um, we created a digital equity committee and Oahu County, uh, through its volunteers, have um, gone out there and the people who don't have access to you know the internet don't have um, you know uh, an upgraded computer with a, a video camera and all of that we've made sure that when we have online events that they need that those folks need to participate in um, that we lend them an ipad you know we'll set it up at their house or some other location maybe their garage or um, you know somewhere else so that they can view it they can participate and we have somebody there to answer their questions. So even if we can't gather all together um, as a 50 person meeting, we're not, we're not gonna leave anyone behind. Yeah. Um, okay, kind of change gears a little bit. Um, the, the party has, uh, I know, get lunch and learn and stuff like that. The different topics you can, you, you've discussed, uh, you know, there's, there's, some on one in particular best value and approach in procurement. I think the you know, government leaders can uh, learn as well as some other uh, organizations. Uh, would the party be kind of pushing for stuff like that? Yeah, uh, so early on in the pandemic, yeah. um, during my chairmanship, we started this lunch and learn series so we could educate our members about different topics. And it's actually been wonderful because we've been able to have national experts uh, join us over Zoom. So we've had folks from uh, the East Coast, uh, folks from the West Coast, and of course, people here in Hawaii who are experts in their fields educating our members. So we're always open to new topics. And the topics that we've selected have been ones that, you know, hopefully are on people's minds and are, are things that people want to learn about whether that's COVID um, or, or even, you know, different things like uh, statehood for Washington, D.C. That was one of them. That was kind of a different one that maybe people wouldn't have otherwise thought about. And as you mentioned, um, you know, more detailed topics like procurement um, or, you know, other aspects of uh, government operations, these things would also help our legislators. And so our, our lunch and learns have been targeted not only at our members, we've also been trying to uh, loop in thought leaders um, and decision makers here in the islands to make sure that they have all the best information uh, possible to make good decisions for all of us. Uh, you, you know, going back to the, uh, the young leaders or, you know, like yourself and other islands, we get, you know, some uh, um, council people too are, are on the state. Yeah. So, yeah, I really see that uh, weighing in, are they, you know, trying to kick out the old guys or what? <laughs> You know, I think our government needs to be representative of the people, and that um, requires a diverse set of people, not only age, but, you know, different backgrounds, different life experiences. And so I'm excited to see, you know, young people um, step up to the plate. Um, and, and we've seen a lot of them run. Some of them didn't win. But I hope that they keep trying because, you know, we, we do need that diversity of, of experiences and everything else. And here are two of our young legislators um, right after the 2020 election who joined us for sign waving. Um, and they're really an example of um, kind of the next generation stepping up. I think that's a good thing. Yeah, um, it's, it's good to get a new perspective with, uh, you know, keeping up with the times. Um, Speaking of, uh, speaking about jobs, you know, yeah, I know some guys, uh, they're telling the kids, why don't you get a real job? And, and then you know, the kids want to play with the computers, and then they find out they're, they can make, I don't know what, YouTube or whatever, videos, or whatever. And they make thousands of remarks yeah. <laughs> with the computers. It's, uh, I mean, it's what a lot of people uh, want to get into now. Um, the, uh, the, the different jobs are on here. You know, th there's a lot of opportunities. Um, and like you said, you know, you got, you studied that 
uh, a lot of programs and, and the apprenticeship and all that is, uh, but it's still necessary though in the in the, the, uh, the basics. Yep, absolutely. I mean, while we look at what's ahead in the future, you know, whether that involves computers or different types of engineering or whatever the case may be, we can't forget about um, all the other jobs that exist here. And we want to make sure that those are well paying, which is why, you know, the Democratic Party has been pushing for a higher minimum wage so that, you know, even folks who are in a minimum wage job can provide for their families and make it you know, make a good quality living here in Hawaii. Um, we can't forget about, you know, our construction workers, we can't forget about our government employees. Um, you know, it takes all of us to make our local economy work. Um, we can't have an economy that only works for, you know, those at the top. And that's definitely a principle that the Democratic Party um, has been fighting for is making sure that everybody that calls Hawaii home has a fighting chance um, to make it here in the islands. It's uh, well, well, one more thing I want to throw out there. Like, even engineers, we got a shortage, you know, all the way up to the top engineers on Koi, the chief engineer at the public works, as well as water department. So, they, uh, so what so What did they do? They reduced the standard to say you don't have to be a licensed guy to be the head engineer. You know, that, but that's up for discussion. Yeah. You know, anyway, uh, our. We're out of time, so we'll have to wrap it up. I'm Dennis Yasaki. This is Politics in Hawaii on Think Tech live streaming network series. We've been talking with Tyler Dos Santos Tan, chairman of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. Thanks to you, Tyler, for being here. Thanks, thanks Dennis. To, uh, thanks to all who put this together, including Michael Haley and Jay Fidel, our executive producer. And thanks to our listeners for tuning in. We'll be back in two weeks with the next show on Think Tech Live.